Hello everybody and welcome to Green Star Trading with me Tom. All views, opinions and ideas expressed in this video are my own and do not constitute financial or trading advice in any way. Right for the next few minutes we're going to be looking at gold and silver, but before we begin... A quick word about the many benefits of becoming a member of the Green Star Trading Patreon. If you already appreciate the work I'm doing on YouTube and wish to show your support for the channel, then why not join Tier 1 for just £5 a month? You still bag yourself an exclusive video each week that won't be available on YouTube. Or why not consider joining Tier 2 for just £10 a month? You still get the same exclusive video each week, but you also get access to the public Discord. There are multiple channels where you can discuss things to your heart's content on multiple subjects with all other Discord members, including myself. You also get access to the entire back catalogue of my educational videos, including the Elliott Wave series, plus other technical analysis videos, including trading and trading risk management. I also host a live session each week via private link to the YouTube. Then finally, Tier 3. For £15 a month, you get all of the previously mentioned benefits from Tier 1 and Tier 2, but you also get access to my monthly dividend calendar where I list my stock picks for the month and all of the relevant ex-dividend and payment dates. You also get access to my stock rating system which is an at a glance rating out of 30 based on company health, value and overall dividend quality. If you yourself wish to look up a specific ex-dividend date or payment date, tag me on the Discord and I can look it up and get back to you. Also, if there's a stock you're interested in and you want me to use my rating system on the stock that you have chosen, Tag me in the Discord and I will get back to you with a score. Thanks for listening guys, and now back to the video. Okay, welcome back guys. Quick word about the Patreon advert you just saw. If you are interested in joining Patreon, I suggest you leave it until the 1st of next month now, February. Um, that way you get charged the first time you sign up and the first of each month thereafter, so you will just incur the one charge and get a four months value, as opposed to signing up now and only getting a couple of days value. So, just a heads up. Right then, let's get on with it. This is going to be a very short video today. Um, we haven't updated gold and silver for a couple of weeks, but everything is still pretty much in line with where we left it. Uh, we have rallied somewhat over the last couple of weeks, but uh, nothing to really confirm one suspicion either way or the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and have a look at this old primary count here, which is the bullish count, which is the one which I honestly feel is the most messy. Um, and I'm very close to downgrading this. Not necessarily into a bearish count, just that there's more evidence from, uh, especially our momentum indicators now over the daily time frame, that we are actually looking at some kind of triangle. Now it's either an inter, it's either a um, interconnecting triangle between two bearish waves, and we've seen an A and the B wave we're in now as a triangle, or the whole thing's a triangle and it's bullish and it will complete uh, before the previous lows at 1680. So. They're the options I see. This is still possible, this bullish scenario here, which is the original count, but I'm really starting to lose faith in it, let's say, just because it's so messy. So a quick rundown of how this actually works. Uh, but like I said, I'm not willing, I'm not going to write this off until it gets invalidated here. You know, it's still technically possible, but it's just looking less and less likely. So essentially, the three were still here. We had a W, X, Y down to here. Um, I think this would, yeah, zigzag, flat, and uh, yeah, flat and zigzag. So a combination down here. So it's actually a double zigzag because the X-way doesn't define it. That's just an adjoining pattern. So zigzag, zigzag. And then we completed here in the four. A quick recap, we've got a one and a zigzag into a two, very deep two, almost breaking, but not breaking. So still legal from any wave rules. We've then got a one, and then we got a very drawn out and complicated um, running flat for the two. Something I'm not particularly fond of seeing. So we went A, B, C. They occur on occasion, but they are the rarest form of flat. If we'd seen the C come down, you know, a little bit lower to take out the A, that would have been an expanding flat, and I would have probably been a bit more favoring this count at that point. But since then, we've then come up in what is either a counter trend move, so we've come down bearishly if we're just putting our bearish hat on for a minute and we're going up in a three wave counter trend move before heading lower. Could be doing that now as we've just hit overhead resistance and are selling off. The bullish interpretation from here would have to be one, 
expanding flat into two, one, two, one, two, and we're building an extension in a three, but that's going to get shat on pretty soon, if I'm absolutely honest. Because if we come back beyond this pivot here, this cannot have been another one, two, because the two cannot transgress beyond where it, um, where the one began. So we'll see. Um, I feel like it's more likely a move down and a move back before we come down again. So let's just look at the alternates. That is the bullish count as the longest term count we've had which was the correction was all the way over here but we've been such a long time trying to get going when it's just looking messy now and i'm not really that confident in it if we were to just zip out of here and break all this overhead resistance then maybe it is just a very drawn out complicated building of an extension inside of the fifth and final wave it's possible but um definitely downgrading the probability of this i think so let's just save a the chart there in case I have adjusted anything. Let's remove this off the chart. And now let's have a look at our various triangle ideas. Because if I just bring up the momentum indicators here on the daily time frame, we can see that we have a series of lower highs in the RSI and we have a series of higher lows in the RSI over, the, over a pretty extended period on the day time frame. We also have the MACD doing the same. Now this is what you want to see with a triangle. You won't always get it, but a triangle supported by um, triangular behavior in the momentum indicators, especially in the RSI, is normally a pretty strong idea that you are dealing with a triangle. The question is, are you dealing with that adjoining triangle, which we can just take from here, or are you dealing with a larger triangle? And that's really the question. So let's just move that to there and deal with the bearish triangle idea first. Let's bring that up. So this is the idea that we've moved down into an A. We then have an A, B, C, D, E, which we've just hit the upper trend and now we're finding in the breakdown in a C. A, B, C. The triangle we're seeing confirmed in the RSI and the MACD here is an adjoining triangle as a B wave before further bearish move lower. So that's the first triangle we can look at and let's just add into that a target for the C, it's basically where I put it. And let's have a look at what that does to our overall count. If coming down to this target would invalidate the bearish idea. I actually do not know if it would, so let's find out. Lock that in place. And what I'll do is actually, I'll just leave that fib extension in place as part of the count because this triangle could actually be going on longer. You know, I'll just show you what I mean. So I've said C's in, D's in, E's in, but what you could do is the D might not be in, right? And this could be a counter trend A, B, because it hasn't broken the top here. If it were to break that, it's more likely bullish rather than the continuation of this pattern because we have to have zigzags in a triangle or one complex wave uh, in amongst a bunch of zigzags or a triangle within a triangle is also possible but you shouldn't have both the complex and the triangle within a triangle but anyway whatever the point is you come down in another zigzag it's a deep zigzag and then we get the D okay then we extend all of this out a little bit further right and then you get the E finally, and then you break down. But I think that's just unnecessarily convoluted. It's possible, right? But let's just say D and E for the moment, because we've come back to trend down that downward trend, which is very very prominent. Okay, we've hit it, and now we're rejecting, or we're just snagging for the moment. But we could be rejecting A, B, and then C down. We come lower. Okay, so that's one way, that's the bearish count, so let's add those to the bearish triangle. Right, so let's have a look at alternate ways of looking at this. What we're assuming now is likely either an adjoining triangle or the whole thing's a triangle. So, this is the more bullish one, or less, less bullish one of the two bullish ideas. Oh, I should be taking that from the B, not from the top, excuse me. So we still have a move we still have a move down in three, right, but it's not free into an A, it's free into an A of a triangle. Then we've got B, then C, then D, and now this will be free, as I suspected a moment ago, talking about the bearish option into E, and then we go. 
Now, if we were to break out of here now violently and knock out the D and the B pivots, which could happen pretty sharpish when gold actually moves, you could argue for an E in place here and it's already in. That's the most bullish. So you've got an A, B, C, D, E's in, and we are doing that one, two, one, two, one, two, and it's an extension, and we'll rock it out of here, at which point it will be very indistinguishable from the bullish count, the primary count, except this will look cleaner as an overall correction, would be my opinion. So that's the second triangle idea. I think there's another, bear with me. Or I think that might be it now. They're the two... I'd, that was that one that we're gonna well, we've done the E yeah and I think I was just expressing both yeah there you go that's the idea that we're gonna come down in A B C here except I've got the complex wave in the A I don't like that at all the complex wave should be C D or E not A or B so I think I just left that and then prefer this instead which is the E's gonna either be in the same position as we just saw down the bottom here and this is a free wave move all the E's already in and it's bullish, so I don't think we need to cover another one now. That's basically the way I see things, it's one or the other. It's either this, and this is A with an adjoining triangle down B into C, or it's bullish, yet to complete, or complete. Now, how do we know this? If we come through these lows, after completing this triangle, and we break into oversold and we break these this rising trend line we lose our rsi support for our triangle now that suggests it's complete so if we come through here we invalidate the triangle from elliott wave rules by breaking the d and the b wave for sure right and the start of the a that's absolutely broken at that point and then we will come down here as an impulse or a diagonal to complete the c okay and that's the that's the way i think we have to look at it um, just realised that's labelled wrong, excuse me, I've said ABC into an A, haven't I? I don't know, I'm talking nonsense. We've got to get down here, 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, excuse me, we've got to get down here as a diagonal into the A. So forgive me for that, I hope nobody picks up on that earlier in the video. So there you go, that should be in the bearish triangle, sorry, I'd forgotten that we were looking at a zigzag overall with an adjoining triangle so this can't be the same as the bullish interpretation the bullish interpretation can be three waves because the whole thing's free 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 right whereas the bearish one is part of a zigzag so we'd have to say diagonal so at that point this is most likely going to be an impulse to alternate between motive waves you don't always get alternation between motive structures you do often get it between corrective structures but to get to target from here, another diag, I think would be a bit of a stretch. I think if we wanted to go one to one because of the rising nature of the triangle here, bringing the correction not from here but from all the way up here, you've got to get some serious work done to get down here. So I think an impulse would fit better. C's tend to be more aggressive. Corrections, um, well, it, it, it depends. Um, on the wave degree and the preceding corrective structures, but in this case, I would expect C to be quite aggressive. Okay, so that's how I see um, gold at the moment. I just want to look at a couple of long term ideas. So, based off of our pivot that we're saying is one into two, um, we've come back to the median line, and then we've been really using the 38.2 from the median line and the median line itself as support and resistance basically channeling 50 has been involved as well between the 50 and the median line price has been channeling up forming this triangle so there's actually not just downward trend resistance here there's the median line resistance here we've broken it once but it is providing some kind of resistance a break up through the median line again and above this previous high that's going to damage the interpretation of the triangle to the point where we've either had a complex wave taking us below this high and we'd have to finish below that high and that's our complex a b c d wave be the complex d here and it still have to finish before this um in order to remain a triangle if it breaks that pivot then there's no saving it as a triangle we'd have to assume that it's completed right and now it's off and it's being bullish two three four five and higher 
Okay, so we can see how the geometry is still playing out essentially. Now, if we take a retracement of the wave three for the wave four, what's also interesting is the relationship channeling along the 38.2. And if we take the overall retracement for wave four, we've come to the 38.2 as a retracement, which is the typical target for a wave four. Now, we overshot in the initial move, but if it is a triangle, We'll work our way back to the 23.6 and the 50 here. Back to the 50 here within the triangle, uh, where, where, within the pitchfork. Then to the median line and the 23.6. Then failing to make the 38.2. Then back. So you, we've kind of settled if we have got the E in, or whether the E comes here back to the 38.2. We're settling very much around the way for target. A much deeper move lower. Let's take our bearish projection for a moment. It's all the way down here at the far edge of the triangle. Right, that is if we were to reach the extremes. Now at that point, although the count is still valid, we haven't broken one and two. We are dealing with an exceptionally deep wave four. Exceptionally deep at that point, which leads me to believe that the whole bullish interpretation would have to be reevaluated at that point, and we'd have to reconsider what went on here and how we got up to the high. I think you'd have, at that point, no choice but to assume that this whole move was three and not one, two, three, four. But for the moment, geometry holding, pitchfork holding, come to a fib retracement, putting in a triangle supported by momentum. Everything to me at the moment is still saying that this is perfectly acceptable interpretation and I would argue more favourable than a more bearish interpretation purely because getting down here Yes, I forced a diagon here to accommodate the count, but it's a bitch. An impulse off of the high would have been a lot clearer. Having a triangle in a two is not possible. Okay, and we seem to have support for a triangle. So saying one, two doesn't seem to make any sense to me at all because this is just feeling and looking like a triangle. So A, B, I can get down with, but one, two seems a bit, doesn't seem right. I guess you'd have to go one, two, no, that's three waves, so you can't go one, two there. So I can't really see a bearish way down here. Uh, one, two, one, A, B, C, two. No, that can't be right. A, B, W, X, Y, two. And then one, no, it's just looking like a pile of shit at that point, isn't it? You know, so it's looking as bad as my primary count is at that point, the bearish count is. So if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then it's probably a duck. And at the moment, there's a lot of support to suggest this is a triangle forming. So bearish or bullish, ABC down or three, four up is more likely, I think, than any count which suggests one, two down would be my personal opinion. All right, that, but if your own analysis supports the alternative and you can count it cleanly and make it work, then go with your own analysis. All right, so that is gold. Let's have a look at silver. Now, I had to change my count in silver a few weeks ago because people, uh, before that, I was working on the idea of this being free, this being free, right? And we we're saying A, B, expansive B wave, and we're working on a diagonal, three into a one, three into a two, three into a three, three into a four, three into a five, right? And then complete and off we go. Now, we we realized that we couldn't do that. And the count we were actually trying to make work was three into here, 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 to get a contracting ending diagonal with a shorter wave three than the wave one and, uh, and a shorter wave five than the wave three. If we do it like this, it can't be a diagonal, right? Can't be a contracting diagonal because the three is not shorter than the one and it has to be in that circumstance. It can't be the shortest overall and therefore must be longer than the five, but it can't be longer than the one in a contracting diagonal. You know, what people like to call a wedge. Each wave gets excessively smaller. So that was off the cards. So instead I decided to look at it as three, three, three zigzag, 
free zigzag and now free zigzag to come so if you think about where we are right in the gold count at the moment we've 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 bumped into overhead resistance in the gold count if we just bring up the triangle we've got this overhead move of, lo of descending lower uh, highs right and we've got the same in this channel here in silver and part of our count for gold was that this was going to be a b c into e for the gold triangle right with another move down well this still fits silver but within this channel of a b c into z of w x y x z okay and that would finish us at the 61 8 percent retracement which is the yellow line you see here it would fill these gaps right fix the chart essentially come back into major support where all this noise is see where the um yeah, you've got your point of control here. The 61.8 is a little higher, right? But either way, um, we've got a very strong contender in the volume profile here. 61.8, edge of the channel, all that stuff. So that's essentially how I see silver. I can't get a bullish completion on it yet. Now, the thing is, if we take out this pivot and this pivot and we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, coming back into test the previous trend for a two i'm gonna have to just figure something out because it's obviously wrong this would be at that point and i don't know how i get down here as a finish because i can't go one two three four five and then go one two because this is a lower low and somebody said to me the other week oh well it's not on um x a G A, whichever the um, CFD ticker is for silver, right? Uh, but it's like it's not there, so this could be one two. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not what it is here on SLV. And every chart has to make sense. Just because one chart doesn't break a rule doesn't mean the other one's allowed to break rules and do whatever the fuck it likes. It's still gonna it's still gonna make sense as a chart on its own. So SLV's got to have a legit count as well. All right, just like any individual chart you're looking at. So in that sense, with this lower low here. The other thing that massively puts me off that is that this is obviously free, not an impulse. Okay, so you'd have to have gone one A B C, giant big C expanding flat one two one two. Now, if that's what comes out of here, they gotta count the impulse from this low, in which case, not able to get it to finish here because of this lower low. But I have to find a way to get it to finish here. Now there might be a way. But I can't see it myself yet. Um, unless there's a zigzag in here, and somehow you've ended up with a truncated Z. Right. Well, it's not truncated, it goes beyond where the Y goes, but it's bloody small. And the teeny tiny zigzag that doesn't seem to have any corresponding relationship with any of the previous zigzags within this move. So that I would find peculiar. But if we take out this high and break out of this channel I'm going to have to consider some way of completing the count here so there you go but that's the best I've got for silver at the moment uh, let's have a look at things volume picking up a little bit here in this rally so there is a little bit of support but not like we saw in this initial move okay and not like we saw during this X wave or what was previously our B wave high so still waiting for some proper volume to show up this could easily be counter trend and then we break down from here we'll have to wait and see uh, regarding the um, my moving average ribbon we are testing the 250 we broke it tested the downward trend came back below the 250 10 and 20 have crossed over the 60 but have come up and found resistance here at the 250 so if we're coming up now just like we did here we crossed through the 250 we came up tested it moved over it slightly then gave it up so maybe that's what we're going to do here we're going to come up to the 250 move over it slightly and then give it up okay if we get the 60 through the 250 to the upside with price above it breaking this high and trending higher that would be a, a classic golden cross at that point and then we'd have to try and find a way to get the count to complete down here. I'm not too stressed about that because if it's going higher, it's going higher. And if it's breaking your count, you can just assume it's bullish. You just necessarily can't explain it from an early way point of view. There will be a count there that makes sense. 
whether or not your human eyes can find it or figure it out. So that's your problem, isn't it? Okay, so that's silver. Looking at some basic technical analysis as well. Let's come back and have a look at gold and do the same and see how it's shaping up. So we've already established the... Um, Actually, we didn't bring up our indicators, did we? We got into very oversold conditions down here. And we got bullish divergence, which explains this counter trend rally, if that's what it is. Back into overbought conditions here, just as we were at the previous highs, just as we were around these previous highs. So we're in the right position to reverse again. All right. MACD is back above the zero but losing momentum. No sell signal on the day time frame yet. How's it look on the weekly? We've got a buy signal on the weekly but still below the zero bound. Momentum isn't particularly impressive. Now what is a bit more compelling is the divergence on the RSI between these lows here. So we'll have to see if that holds up. Maybe if we come down and don't set a lower low and then rally. We'll have to see how that translates with the RSI here. Let's come have a look at gold. Turn off this, uh, hide this for the moment. All right, so rising lower lows, descending lower highs. RSI looks like a triangle. MACD looks like a triangle. This looks like a triangle. Coiling way more than silver is. Another thing which you tend to see in a triangle is whip soaring and coiling um, moving averages where they just go back and forth, 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 over and over and over and again. And that seems to be occurring at the moment. Okay, um, let me get, don't know why it's not here. I think it's because the chart doesn't show, no, it doesn't show volume, does it? It does allow volume profiles though, I'm sure of it. It's just been a while since I've used one. Only within a certain range. Yeah, not applicable. Right, zoom in a bit. There you go. Only with so many candles in view for some reason. <clears throat> exactly what you'd expect to see as well. All right, another feature of a triangle. We've got these coiling. Um, moving averages. We've got RSI and MACD pointing out a triangle. We've got a series of contracting structures and we've got our point of control smack in the middle of the whole thing. Yeah, so that's that. Alright then guys, that's all I've got to say on gold and silver. We are just awaiting something to happen. Break out, take out these highs. Off we go bullish. Come back to test this. It's either an E or this is the E and we're going to break these lows in which case we're heading lower. So it's all about this range between this high and the previous lows. Any result above, any result below is a continuation of either this previous trend or the completion of a larger correction and the continuation of this previous trend. All right then guys, thank you for joining me on this technical analysis of gold and silver. If you're new to the channel and you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe, smash the like, hit the little bell notification icon to remain informed of future video releases. And thank you as always to my Patreon subscribers. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon, like I said, leave it till the start of next month. It's probably best. Unless you want to give me more money, I will not object. And uh, follow the link in the description box below to the Patreon page, have a read of the tiers, see if there's anything you're interested in. And also, if you're not following me on Twitter yet, please do so, as I always um, post... What should I say? I always put a Twitter notification up when I post a new video. All right, guys, take care of yourselves, and I'll be back with you soon. All the best. Bye-bye.